Australia and New Zealand are quite different, even terrain-wise in particular. I was amazed when I went to Australia for the first time because I too was expecting it to be quite similar. Um, New Zealand's very lush and green. Um, Australia is quite red and the trees aren't very bushy. So there's all the eucalyptus trees rather than New Zealand's got uh, bushy trees with lots of birds and insects but no scary animals. Our Australia is, looks more barren uh, but it's really beautiful as well with the eucalyptus trees and the animals are more ferocious and they've got spiders and snakes and koalas and wallabies um, but New Zealand just has the birds and a few lizards. Australia's got a lot of a large Italian community and Greek community. Uh, New Zealand is basically all made up of immigrants from the UK. There's quite a lot of Asians in later year that have come from Japan and Malaysia um, and more so India now. But when I was growing up it was a lot a lot more just Europeans from the UK. The indigenous people from Australia have been there for a very, very long time and had lived in the desert for a long, long time and I don't think had um, encountered anybody for a long time until Europeans went there. Uh, the Māori people travelled from somewhere. I don't think anyone knows exactly where, but I think it's sort of thought that it's from Hawaii and they travelled over in boats um, and they were, they fought a lot amongst themselves, so they were more advanced at warfare uh, than the um, indigenous people in Australia as well. And they communicated a lot differently and they traded. And so I think them as people, as well as what happened to them after Europeans arrived in their land, differs. So they've History seems to be quite different in both countries, and it is still a two and a half hour flight from New Zealand to Australia. They're not joined. <laughs>
um, so to Sydney City. So that was a totally different thing altogether again, um, being in a city that's right on the coast um, and a beautiful city at that. Um, when I was 12, um, we moved to England. Um, both my parents are English, and so they had spent 18 years by that point out of the country and decided it was about time that they got to know, that we got to know our cousins, our grandparents, all of our family back in England better. And although we developed family, um, people who weren't actually family to us by blood, um, but people who we considered aunties and uncles in Australia, um, it wasn't the same as having those people we saw kind of every second Christmas. And so we moved um, and it was, everyone thinks that England and Australia are are kind of culturally the same, um, but actually it was very, very different. They're very different people. Um, I think the Australians are are much more open. There is a different, you get different influxes there um, from different countries as well. So there you've got um, a lot of Koreans, you've got a lot of Japanese, um, a lot of Japanese, who else have we got? We've got Greek and Chinese. Um, whereas when I came to England, there was a lot of Afro-Americans, um, a lot of Indians, especially where I live. Um, and so it was so interesting to see the difference in that. I've, I've got two options available. I've got one that's a three-bedroom house um, on Parfrey Street, uh, which is located just uh, five minutes walk from here, quite close to the tube station, um, close uh, to the river. Um, it's a three bedroom house over two floors, uh, double reception, uh, large eating kitchen. Uh, it's recently refurbished, so it's got a brand new kitchen in there, um, new bathroom. Um, the rear garden is south facing, so obviously you get the sun most of the day. Um, or the, there's two good sized double bedrooms. The third one's obviously a bit smaller, um, but it's still large enough to fit a double bed and a wardrobe. Um, it's, as I say, in pretty good order, um, and it's available from the you know, 22nd of August. Um, what sort of date is it that you're looking to move? Uh, as soon as possible, really. As soon as possible, so that, that could work. Would you like a view in of it? Would you like to see? Uh, did you say there was another property? I've got another property, which is, it's not a house, but it's actually a riverside uh, flat. Um, so it's three bedrooms again, two bathrooms, both uh, one ensuite suite and a, and a separate cloakroom. Um, fairly n- large kitchen. Um, it's a gated development with 24 hour porterage. Um, obviously get river views. There's a small balcony um, that overlooks the river. Um, it's got an underground car parking space with it, um, and that's available at the end of August. Right, that's really interesting. Um, just out of interest, are there any flats in the area apart from that one? Uh, I've got a three-bedroom masonette, which is on um, Lock Line Street. That uh, is a little bit smaller than, than the house. That's on the market at £500 per week. Um, it uh, It is in... Uh, fairly good order. Um, it was refurbished about five years ago. Um, masonette being meaning that it's over two floors. Um, there's two bathrooms there. Uh, one of them is en suite. Um, the kitchen is fairly small um, and there's no outside space for it. There's no garden. And how big were the bedrooms in that one? Uh, they're both good sized double bedrooms, so big enough for, you know, they've actually both got built in wardrobes, um, big enough for double beds. And as I say, one of them's got an ensuite bathroom. For those three, were they furnished or unfurnished, part furnished? Uh, they're actually, uh, two of them are fully furnished, so everything is included, uh, even down to TVs and DVD players. Um, the other one is part furnished, but the landlord is open to uh, putting more uh, furniture or TVs, etc. in there. You have household help, you have somebody to cook for you and a, a wash of, a lady will come in the morning to wash your clothes and uh, you know, you'll have somebody to do the cleaning for you. But it's not just about, in India, it's not just about having the help, it's not a luxury, it's also a means of providing employment to somebody.
so it's a, it's a, it serves two two full purposes. And secondly, the houses in India are not designed for self maintenance. You would die if you had to clean and scrub every day. Most majority of India is quite hot, and the, just the scrubbing and the cleaning would take. You know, you need to dust every day. Here, you don't really need to dust every day, but in India, you need to dust maybe twice a day. So uh, it's the sheer volume of work as well. But uh, I, I do find. After having children, that it's a lot more because I'd rather be with them rather than do housework. And I guess as a working mom, it's never the right balance. But in India, it is changing in the cities in the sense that people are getting dishwashers and washing machines, and they just find it easier. Because not to forget, the more help you have, the more people you have to manage. But I think by and large, that culture will not change of having household help. So in India, you know, as a family, you would have a local handyman or somebody who comes round to fix your plumbing or your electricity or your refrigerator or any appliance, or if something breaks, you would just give it or send it off to them, and they would try and fix it. Now that I live in London, I'm sharing a house with four other young professionals. Um. And we have a nice house, but it's not as luxurious and comfortable as my parents' house back home, which has a nice garden, two well, a garden at the front, a garden at the back, um, two big garages, you know, three bathrooms, um, and lots of bedrooms and lots of space, a big kitchen, patio area. Um, my house here is nice and clean, and we keep it nice but it's not as comfortable um, and we don't have like nice kitchen equipment or um. I think in London there's so many people and so much housing that you don't and it's so expensive that you don't have the opportunity to have all of like all of the space and the nice my par my parents house um, is next to a national park that has a lighthouse and it's right on the coast um, and there's lots of space and there's fields and horses and you know the beach and everything um, and cliffs and things and there's loads of space and you do feel much freer than you do in London where you know there's ha they build houses everywhere because there's so much demand. <laughs>